And there we are. There it is. We're we're live, ladies and gentlemen, for another edition of After the Cook. Happy, happy Tuesday. Everybody, if you are joining us, I am Chris Shem, the Title Pound Griller, and this lovely mustachioed, mulleted, beautiful man is Mel, Dark Side of the Grill, Schmeller Jr. There we go. There we go. Yes, sir. How are we doing today, buddy? Oh, today is a good day. It is Tuesday. It's not Monday. And yeah. Yeah. I got no complaints. I I am in the same canoe as you, my friend. So we got yesterday off for family day. It's that just a family our... day? Like it's is 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 that a company thing or is that a Canada thing? No, that's a Canada thing. Canada really? thing. So the Monday family day, you get the day off to spend it with the family, which was crazy the day after Valentine's Day. Mm. That actually, that was not good for me. That actually didn't work for me at all, having the Monday off. But, uh, yeah, there you go. So I'm coming off of that. Today was a bit rough getting going with uh, work and whatnot. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, we got Captain Ron and Big Tuna. There we go. Look at that. Already oh, right out of the gate. Always. Thanks for joining us again on a lovely edition of After the Cook. It's gonna be a good one. I'm I'm excited about tonight. It'll be uh, it'll be a fun chat. You know, just fun talking to uh, our creator people, much like when we talked with Noam on uh, Trumpo King. Yes, yes. I always love I always love the outside the box people, and this is gonna be a good one. This is gonna be yeah, really and, you know, kind of peeking behind yeah. the curtain maybe a little bit. Yeah, and I got a lot of questions, a lot of neat stuff. So, how was your weekend? What's uh, was, what, what's new in Mel's world? It was good. It was really good. It was quiet. Um, I got a funny Valentine's Day story. Okay. But, okay. Yeah, we could. We could. I don't know if you want to do that now or what. But so the wife, <laughs> the wife asked me for Valentine's Day instead of flowers. She didn't want flowers this year, which I always get kind of elaborate with the flowers. This year, no bueno with the flowers. Okay, no problem. She asked for heels instead. And me, I'm a big fan anyway, so I'm like, you know what? This is a great idea. We'll get you a couple pairs of shoes for Valentine's Day. Everybody's happy, right? Maybe mm -hmm. we can play around in them a bit and do this kind of stuff. It's, it's all good. Everything's fantastic. So it was a good idea. Then it comes down to eating. And she says to me, and this is the day before, so this is Saturday. Saturday says to me, you know what I would love? Hot dogs and macaroni and cheese. And here, this is the this is the the part of being an Instagram person, being in that realm. It weighs heavily on you. These things. Mm -hmm. There is no way that I could have put up a hot dog and craft dinner post. I had to do something more, so I went above and beyond. I ran out to the old grocery store and I got a live lobster, got some king crab. Right, I defrosted one of my old tomahawks, got that going, did some cast iron mushrooms and whatever, whatever, and I did it all up real nice, right? Meanwhile, I'm I'm also drinking. <laughs> so, and then I also got a bottle of that new uh, Snoop Dogg, 19 Crimes, the Cali Red. Okay, yep, yep. So, so we had that for dinner with all of this food, right? Which was fantastic. She only had a half a glass. She's like, this is a bit sweet for me, whatever. I had the rest of the bottle. So we're going to put that on top of like drinking while I'm cooking and all of this stuff. And then I got into the, the bourbon pineapples, mm -hmm. which are quite nice. I'm about to have one right now. But this took me into another place. Where we at 10 10 30 at night we were watching Crocodile Dundee as our romantic nighttime movie. The 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 original? Yes, the original Crocodile Dundee. Going for a walkabout. And, that's right. And uh that was when I passed out. <laughs> On Valentine's Day. So then the next day, she plays a card that she's not played with me before. She's like, it was a nice meal, and I'm very lucky to have someone that's going to cook this for me and whatever, whatever. And then she says, the food really didn't matter to me. I just wanted to spend that time with you. Mm. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks, and I quickly ran to the kitchen and started boiling water for those hot dogs right away. 
And then that's what we had on family day where I was actually going to do some burgers and stuff. No, no, we had hamburgers or we had hot dogs and craft dinner on family day. And that was it. That was, and I spent the whole day in the family room with the family doing family stuff. And that was it. There was no, holy was I ever. So there was so, also that, but. So on, on Valentine's day, my daughters, actually, we started this, gosh, probably four years ago now, and they keep bringing it up, that we get a heart-shaped pizza from um, Papa Murphy's. And we oh, make nice. so, so that's our Valentine's Day party. It's a heart-shaped pizza. My girls love it. They remind us. So, you know, every Valentine's Day we do it for them. So I'm off the hook on Valentine's Day. Saturday night we went big. I had crab legs, a couple of Snake River Farms tenderloins. You know, it was a nice meal that we all kind of enjoyed. But, you know, for Valentine's Day, it's just little key pizza. We had our jammies on. We all snuggled in and watched movies. Yeah. It was great, you know. Oh. I can't complain. So, yeah, we got we got a nice little crew in here tonight, too, already. Yeah, look at that. That's fantastic. So, uh, Darren's hinting at I had put up a story, one of my no. stories, with me singing from The Wedding Singer. And then quickly realized that I had put that up and then deleted it. I, yeah, I actually the wedding singer that was from old school. That yeah, from old school. That's right. But the guy yeah. singing at yep. the yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Oh, so you saw it too? Everybody I saw did. it. I, I tried I to get. Saw, I, I didn't hear it. I saw it. So I, I so, so so I didn't actually get to hear those. Uh, you know, the velvety voice of uh, Mel or or maybe no. Schmel. Yes, Mel Tormey. That's the Velvet Talk. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's every once in a while. You know what? I've been doing really well. We've been doing really. It's everything's just been good, and I, I, yeah, I got a little off track there. That's all it was. You're in a good mood, and you uh, let loose a little bit. That's it. That's yeah. The bourbon pineapple got you. Oh, it sure did. It was fantastic, mind you. But uh, yeah, it's yeah. So there you go. That was my that was my Valentine's Day story. There, it was. Uh, it's good. It's fun. Yeah, we're yeah. we're currently we're we're not in the middle of it. We're in the beginning stages of it. We're remodeling our kitchen, so yep. we're going through. Um, you know, my wife used to be a kitchen and bath designer. Uh, her degree is in 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 interior design, but getting her to make the decision for our own house is quite difficult. So <laughs> we're in the process of you know cabinetry colors. Stone countertops, backsplashes, floor colors, but we're making progress, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy with it. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, that'll be fun when that's done. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, like like we hinted that we got a great show tonight. We got Matt from Cotton Gin um, Smokers on the night. I saw uh, Shelby, Miss uh, High Voltage herself, was in here too, saying hi. Nice. So uh, nice we're gonna nice. have. Probably some people who are might be here for the first time, so it'll be fun to kind of give them a glimpse as to what we're doing every Tuesday night live here. And soon we'll have uh, another announcement for you guys. Awesome, awesome, yeah. yeah I, I'm pumped about this. I brought, I brought it up. I was doing the the uh, the grab them by the brisket podcast, and I, uh -huh. I brought it up, and they had quite a few questions for me about it. They were like, "Oh, really? Let's let's talk about this." So you know, I, I don't know if we're ready to release it the whole. The whole platform out yet but you know what i mean we're getting there and it's mm -hmm. definitely i think we're we're going to be sitting pretty once she uh she releases in the in the big the big pool so yeah how's your uh seeker project coming along uh it's on park right now um getting new axles and okay. because of the cold weather nobody's doing nothing so it's tied up in a garage right now getting an axle swap turns out the old axles are antiques so now all the hardware has to be cut off and redone and blah, 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 blah. So it's, you know how it is. Yeah, it's an event. It wouldn't be a Mel project unless it was an event. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Ryan, that's you, buddy. That's um, yeah. So thank you for everybody who's coming out again. And should we bring in our guest? I think we should. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Tuesday. There you go. And Lee's in. All right, everybody. I am super pumped to introduce Matt Messer. There he is. Hey, everybody. There you are, there sir. You How are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. How are y'all? Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So for those of you who don't know, Matt Messer is the founder, owner, designer of Cotton Gin Smokers. 
That's right. Oh, uh, somewhere in Ohio. Uh, Southwest Michigan, actually. Southwest uh, Michigan. Okay. That's much better than Ohio. <laughs> yes, I agree. Sorry, any Ohio Wait. people out there. <laughs> so, I, I guess I should ask you, though, are you a Ann Arbor fan? Say it again. Are you a University of Michigan fan? No, sir. I'm a Texas Longhorn fan. Born and raised in Texas. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I can handle that. There you go. Yep. I can handle that. Awesome. So, yeah, why don't you give uh, everybody a little bit of uh, in- introduction? Tell us about yourself a little bit. Yeah. Uh, like I said, born and raised in Texas. Uh, grew up eating uh, Texas barbecue. Moved to West Tennessee for 10 years right out of high school. Um, well, a couple years out of high school and uh, learned to appreciate Memphis style barbecue. Uh, love some dry rub ribs. Um, didn't learn to cook barbecue until I moved to Michigan. Um, a gentleman up there had a barbecue restaurant from, and he was from Alabama and, um, he had had a barbecue restaurant in Dothan, uh, and moved up there, taught me how to smoke meat and, uh, I fell in love with it. And I've always loved to grill. Um, and I actually built my first smoker back in high school, um, and my, my senior class project in my welding class. And, um, never thought 20 years later, I'd be, uh, <laughs> making smokers, uh, uh, as a business, but, um, uh, I've, I've stayed passionate about grilling and, and then just got into smoking meat um, probably about six years ago and <clears throat> um, loved uh, serving barbecue and, and different, you know, pulled pork and brisket and, and ribs and, uh, you know, chicken, whatever. And um, uh, somebody, uh, uh, my stepdad actually, um, uh, he, he asked me one day if I wanted to build barbecue smokers and um, uh, based on me getting some blueprints for some smokers for the smoker that I owned. And, um, and I said, well, I don't know. I had never thought about that really. Um, and long story short, we started a company uh, called Cotton Gin Smokers. Um, and the original uh, place where our smokers were manufactured were, uh, was in Mississippi in an old cotton gin. Um, and, uh, that was our first shop. And then, um, I took a business on the company on myself, um, in 2019 and built my first drum smoker in January of 19. And, um, well, uh, we'd actually launched back. We launched the business, uh, uh, together at Memphis in May of 2018. Uh, and then I took it on myself in 19, um, and went the direction of the drum smokers. Um, and now, uh, well, we'll get into what's coming Later, but uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, I had actually laughed at uh, drum smokers uh, at Memphis in May, and um, I had seen some, and and just you know was like, man, uh, what are they cooking? In? Is that a trash can or what? <laughs> and um, uh, somebody challenged me to make one and to test it out, and so I did, and and a high of nine degrees with snow on the ground, and in, in January of nineteen. When I got 18 hours of cook time before I choked out the fire, I was I was sold. I was impressed, and and uh, with fuel still left in the charcoal basket, um, and so called up a buddy, built another one for him. Uh, just charged him the cost of the parts, and um, those were out of used drums, and uh, and then I shifted to new barrels, uh, getting straight from the manufacturer, um, and um, yeah, um, outsourced my parts quite a bit um for a while and uh, now we're we're shifting towards our own parts and um uh with our logos and stuff on them and uh making it making it totally ours um so yeah pretty awesome. stuff awesome. So. so my man mel he's a journeyman welder so do you have some sort of construction background welding background or something like that that made you jump into this no, actually, I'm hiring Mel. Um, we, that was one of the things we're going to talk about here in a minute. Uh, That's one of the new things coming. Mel is now uh, on staff with Cotton Gin Smokers. He doesn't know it yet. But <laughs> uh, you know, I took a welding shop class my senior year in high school, and I fell in love with it. Um, and I grew up a pastor's son in Texas. And uh, in West Texas, I was surrounded by farmland. Uh, everybody had cows, and I was a preacher's kid, and I didn't have cows. And uh, so I thought, man, I want to build something that I can use and um, that I can utilize. And everyone's building cattle pens and stuff. And 
So I started exploring and a, and a guy that uh, in our town there had a smoker on a trailer and I, I was fascinated by it. And I went to him and I asked him, I was like, how much money do you have in that thing? And, and did you build that yourself? And just asking him questions about it. And he said, well, I probably got about $3,000 in it. And I went, ha, I'm going to build cattle pens. <laughs> uh, as a senior in high school, I did, like, no, I don't got that kind of cheese. So, um, long story short, I wound up uh, scrounging the parts and uh, my next door neighbor gave me a trailer, uh, with a boat on it. He said, if you'll take that boat, I'll give you the trailer. I said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, so I started with that and then got some pipe, um, and, um, we started welding and, and, and building a, a smoker an offset smoker. The next year I came back to visit that shop class. Uh, and, and, uh, I was on Christmas break and I went to my teacher and was catching up in his office. He said, Matt, let's go back to the shop, check, check some stuff out. We walked back there and, and, uh, my mind was blown. Uh, the floor was lined with grills and smokers. And he looked at me and said, Matt, whatever you did last year by deciding to do a smoker instead of cattle pins, uh, transformed the thinking of this class. And well. it's all people want to do now. There's no more cattle pins. And I was just floored, literally probably 30 girls and smokers on that floor. Wow. And, uh, and I, I just, that really meant a lot to me that, I mean, I had no idea that that decision was going to affect people's thinking. And he's like, we're playing with airflow and everything else and, and, and design. And, um, so, and I had, had had thoughts of going into welding as, as a, a career after that, um, <clears throat> and wound up going a different direction. Um, and I didn't, I didn't pick up a welder until, again, until uh, this last year. Um, and I decided to start welding my parts on. And uh, I bought an ESOB welder and um, I got a buddy who's, who's uh, on staff with them and got, got one of those. And, um, and uh, yeah, so uh, my welding uh, has probably is not up to par as metals. Uh, uh, so, so Mel, uh, you'll just have to forgive, uh, um, if, if, if you're not a welder, you're a grinder, right? <laughs> no, that's, yeah, that's. <laughs> so, uh, but, but I'll say this my, every day, my welds have gotten better and better and I'm constantly practicing, trying to get, you know, get back in that and been, been welding, uh, probably I've been probably welding for about a year now, um, about get it. So, um. And then I've got another guy that helps out. He does. He's he's really good with welding. Awesome. Um, awesome. So, Mel, have have you ever cooked on a drum smoker? I have not. That is one of the things. So I've been around a ton of them, and uh -huh. uh, like I said on the competition circuit, almost everyone's got one somewhere in their arsenal. Whether it's a backup or they're running full drums, right? We've got guys that run with eight drums. Like it's nuts. Mm -hmm. It's it's. They're super handy, super lightweight, right? So that's that's the big sell for that is that they can pack them up super, super easy. So I, I am I'm very interested to play with one. I, I have not yet. So that's that's been on my list for quite a while. Yeah. So my my parents um, must be like three years ago now when they got out, but for a few years they were really on the uh, barbecue circuit, um, helping out. Um, a local team here was very good. They, you know, they were ranked really, really. I think, I think at one point they were like eighth in the nation in brisket. Um, yeah. So they were, you know, they had it dialed in. But they somehow through all that they met um, an owner of a different um, drum smoker company, and for some reason they thought it was a great idea to get a custom drum smoker, a thirty-three gallon, for my six-year-old for her birthday. So <laughs> she's she's nine. Yeah, she's nine now, but she for her sixth birthday she got a thirty-three gallon drum smoker, and I will tell you that it is it makes better ribs than I can make on my eggs uh, because my daughter like if if I'm doing ribs I usually do three racks so I get like the three rack pack from Costco I'll put two on my egg and one on hers because she wants to get it out and you know truth be told I don't use it enough. Um, so, you know, we'll get it out and we'll cook on it. And I think for me, one of the biggest differences is just the um, amount of space when when you're smoking that you have in between your heat source and yep. your grill grade then, uh, especially when I'm doing ribs on my extra large. 
Um, it, it got better when I moved them up to the top shelf of the ex expander because then I was about, you know, maybe 18 inches away from the fire. But even in my daughter's small 33 gallon drum smoker, where you're a good, you know, nearly 24 inches away from that heat source, I think that makes a big difference in just the outcome of the ribs. Oh, that in that in that whole physics of the cook, mm -hmm. there are so many things that I can think of already that I would love to put high up there. Like fish mm -hmm. in a cage is one for sure, right? Hanging chickens, mm -hmm. hanging chickens. I can imagine that would just be phenomenal. So yeah, that's like that Peking duck I did, right? And mm -hmm. I had to hang it from the top vent of the big green egg to get it up into the dome. I actually used my 2XL just so I could get high enough away from the charcoal. That would be a perfect instance for something like that. And I imagine you could make a nice rack. You could hang quite a few ducks, get that going, because those things for mm -hmm. the work, man, you want to do 10 at a time would be fantastic. Yeah, That's I, awesome. That's... I, I haven't been able to cook on a cotton gin yet. My, uh, I, unfortunately, my buddy Ty, um, uh, Ty Foti spoke, and Ty's not going to make it tonight. He sent me a message. He... Uh, he is actually, or he was actually the best man at my wedding. He's my, uh, him and his wife are my son's godparents. So him and I are real tight. We, we live two hours away now that we moved back up here, but obviously with COVID, we haven't gotten a chance to get together and grill. So next month, we're about a month away, we're going to be able to get together and grill, and I'm sure we'll bust that out because um, nice. just to play around with it a little bit. Nice. Um, so there's a big question for you, Matt. Um, <clears throat> holding temps in colder climates. How does that engine do that? Well, like I said a second ago, uh, when I tested my first one out, my, my prototype, 18 hours held steady. That was running manual with no fan control, um, and it, it held about 2.30 for 18 hours before I shut the fire off. No. Um, and um, so you can get 20-plus hours um, out of a cook. Now, obviously, if you're using a fan, it's going to get um, uh, less cook time. Um mm -hmm. But that's forced air on charcoal, so it's you know it's the science in that. But as long as you know that, then then you're good. But um, but yeah, it's it holds excellent, and that, that's that's why I, that's why I started this because mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I was in the winter when I tested it, and and uh, I was like, well, heck, if we can do this good in the winter time, it's going to do great year round. And um, so yeah, and it's you know they're not insulated, you know, and uh, one would one's mind would say, you know, I need to have an insulated smoker that, you know, uh, that can hold the tents better in, in, in the wintertime. But, you know, yep. we live up here and, and we see how they, how they, uh, how they hold. So, um, well, that yeah. being, that being said, one of the first cookers that I, I learned to cook on in the, in the very beginning, other than like the propane, um, it was a Cabela's five in one, or seven in one little tin can. It was like a silver bullet, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a very small version, pretty much of you know top vent, bottom vent, and away you go. And and we'd get creative with hanging stuff off the top and stuff as well. But it was a lot smaller size. But sure. I, I remember we had the uh, Team Canada was in the World Juniors, and it was five o'clock in the morning. The game start, I think, Ooh. and the bars were allowed to be open for this like canada was like for this one thing we're gonna let you keep your <laughs> doors open it was nuts so all the boys came over to my place it was like minus 35 celsius so i think that that's almost straight across the board there for fahrenheit to celsius it was really bad and i was cooking that thing i had a brisket on there and it took a bit longer to cook the brisket just with those major temperatures but it was also me being lazy, not going out there, you know, checking on it or, or throwing new new charcoal or whatever. It, it was it was quite a cook, but the ribs were fine, the, the wings were fine, and the brisket ended up fine. And people couldn't believe that thing had zero insulation, tin, like, and it, it cooked. Trying to start a propane barbecue, you'd be trying to heat your propane tank yeah. enough to, like, fire it up. It's it's All crazy. Right. Done, done that. Yeah, yeah that's... Well, so one of the things that got to help, you know, the drum smokers or, you know, definitely the uh, um, cotton gin is the airflow. So the airflow you're getting out of the vertical stacks, right? So crosswinds, if you're outside in cold weather where it's really kind of whipping across, that's not going to have as much of an effect on fluctuating the temps on a 
grill like a cotton gin that you might run into with some of the other uh, uh, yeah. types of grills. So uh, we've got three models. Uh, if you go on our website, you've got the, the sower, you've got the reaper, and you've got the harvester. <clears throat> and um, the sower and the, the reaper, they have direct – I mean, the air is direct to it because you've got um, on the on the sower you've got a draft door, much like the big green egg, um, and so that air the the benefits to that is it gets hotter quicker, mm -hmm. um, and the the negative to that is um, the air. If you got high winds, so I live out in the country um, and I live uh, on on a field and we get some pretty serious high winds. Um, and so I know that if I, if I've got some ends coming that day, or if it's just picking up, then I, I crank that towards the house and away from the, away from the wind. Uh, and, um, but yeah, it like the, the up, up right takes, yeah. The, it, so you're not going to have as much uh, change in your temperature there, um, because it, that air is just going to flow right over the, the, the hole as opposed to blowing directly into it like the other two models. But, um, yeah. No, that's correct. All of your smokers, do they have a basket for the charcoal? They do. Yep. Okay. yep. All, all, all of them, the engine uh, looks the same. So you've got the charcoal basket, you've got the heat shield, and you've got the baffle plate, the adjustable baffle plate. Um, and they all come with that. So it's not an add on or an extra piece that you have to get later. It comes with it. Um, and um, yeah, so then you've got a. The first two models, the, the sower and the reaper, have a single great level. The harvester mm -hmm. has the tri-level system in there uh, that you can go for different levels. Comes with they all come with one laser cut grate, but um, that one has three levels. You can... How much smaller is the diameter of the uh, charcoal basket compared to the diameter of the grill or the smoker? Uh, you're it's about eighteen inch in diameter uh no about 16 inches diameter uh the, the basket and then 22 okay. and a half on the uh okay. drum itself nice. you get a good you know two and a half to three inches on the all the way around yeah. it to really help with that airflow too and uh you know yeah, be able you to some, you got some space there and then the the heat shield um comes in from the drum about a, about an inch or so okay. um so yeah you got lots of space there Nice. Great, the convection. Um, so obviously, one of the things that I think would be considered um, your signature or something that you know really sets you apart from other um, drum smokers that are on the market is the harvester with your door that goes into it. Um, you know, functional, practical. And from an Instagram standpoint, really cool because you can get some awesome pictures that you can't get on other drills. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, like you said, it's multi-purpose. Uh, uh, and you um, you named a couple of them there. Uh, photography's become a big one. Pictures, um, uh, but accessing your charcoal basket. So if you're doing two long cooks back to back, um, and you just want to add uh, you know fuel to your your basket, uh, that's pretty easy to do from there. Um, and if you, um, uh, say you're cooking on a, on a lower level, if you have two grates in there, um, uh, mm -hmm. so some people will add a second grate, um, and that, that bottom grate, you can, um, uh, you can access that meat right there and pull it off. You know, it's going to get done a little quicker being that close to the heat, but, <clears throat> um, uh, or if you need to rotate, you know, uh, so you have a butt down here and a butt here, and you want to rotate them. Um, you can do that pretty easily without having to pull everything out of there. Um, so before, if you had a multi-level system with no door on there, you're pulling the, the meat off the top grate, you're pulling the grate out, and then you're pulling the meat off the bottom grate, and then you're putting the grate back in, and then you're putting the meat back in. So uh, it's a lot of maneuvering. So this kind of helps eliminate some of that. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's where you're different purposes there yeah what was kind of your driving focus behind that just because you wanted to be able to get at the charcoal was was that kind of the uh the genesis of it were you yeah i um yeah it was really to be able to access the bottom level is why mm -hmm. I, I really stuck with it um so um uh, 
and, and it, then all the other things just kind of fell into place there. Um, uh, and then it, it makes a great place to put your logo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it does. It's, it's, it's become a really good place to showcase that. Um, so. But it's definitely it's definitely been almost like a signature move for sure that the whole the whole system. I'm not going to lie to you. The first time I ever stopped and said like, "Geez, I would not," you know, uh, fight getting into a drum smoker was one of yours, and just to see all of the gadgets and everything that was all piled onto it, it was like it was amazing. The big snorkel, it was with the window. I was like, "That's that's perfect. That's." Actually, like it's a, a really, and I think that might have been Ty's unit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did you just like call, did you just, call the intakes a snorkel. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get that. <laughs> okay, I dig it. So now we're gonna start cooking underwater. <laughs> That's it. The snorkel, man. Like it was. I loved it. Like I absolutely. And just the, you know, the custom, the color scheme kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Right away, I was like, like imagine an oiler's oil oil drum smoker. Like right away. This has to happen now. Like I instantly got excited about it. And then I saw Ron had one. I was like, oh, look at this now. This is oh fantastic units. But um yeah, I, I whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. And if anybody's oh, looking, they should look up cotton gin smokers because you definitely I like I, I don't really I'm I'm pretty even building my own, right? I'm pretty focused on what I like not too many times something's going to catch my attention. And I was like a pike with a, with a fish hook right there. I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, that, some little flash over there. I got to take a look at that. It was uh yeah, I was, I was very, very taken back by all the diff- different options and stuff. It and, was quite nice. And I think that's one of the things that makes cotton gin stand out versus other drum smokers. Not only the innovativeness of having that door and, you know, just the possibilities that that opens up, but you look at that as more of a more than a smoker than at that point. You can hang, sure, you can still do your ribs, your pork butt, your brisket on there. Um, you know, Ty was there hanging, you know, summer sausage that he was able to sit there and smoke and be able to control that low temp. I think he had um, seven, eight, nine, I think he did 17 and two batches. So he had eight, eight and nine tubes hanging from it at, you know, at a time. You have the thing that has, does it have like a triangle that has three? Yeah, it's a tri, um, a tri bar that that hooks into. Yep. Uh, so you've got three three brackets that are welded on the inside, and then you've got a tri bar that hooks into the same same bracket system as your tri level um, uh, hooks. So um, yeah, those brackets are multi purpose uh, for for different things you can add in there. <clears throat> but yeah, you, so know, you can you can comfortably hang nine racks of ribs. Uh, twelve, you can you can get twelve on there. Um, and um, and then we just added a, a hanging system for our single grate um, smoker. If you saw that on Instagram, um, that's going to be coming on the website before too long. And um, but you'll be able to hang twelve extra ribs uh, minimum um, on on that system as well. So oh, that's awesome. So Ty Sherell, he's he's a big guy with Rec Tech. He's doing amazing things with them with. Uh, video and stuff and he's 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 a really neat cat he's out in texas sitting by the pool right now covered in snow so yeah man it's, it's pretty neat he's 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 digging it up now it's uh it's always good man i i love i love when people meet on here right it's like yeah. you know, lost connections right it's fantastic i yeah it's well, uh if he's if he's from texas he's a brother or cousin or something <laughs> well, yeah that's the way it goes man i i love it i absolutely love it. barbecue community man it's it's absolutely None other, none other. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's right. It's always that's- nice to see, um, you know, different options, different ways you can do it. Um, somebody had a great question. Does the cotton gin currently or possibly might have in the future have a rotisserie option? <laughs> uh, there's, uh, that, that's, uh, that's definitely been on my brain. Um, it's not in the works yet. Uh, we've okay. got some other things in the works, but it is, uh, it, it's up here somewhere, <laughs> rattling if, around. Yep. If you want, I can show you my Budweiser engineering uh, of a universal rotisserie that was installed on on a <laughs> on a Cabela's five or seven in one with a drill bit and some drywall screws, which worked <laughs> fantastic. Just throwing it out. <laughs> we can make that work. <laughs> yeah, that's like <laughs> quite literally. It's it's not. You should talk to. Talk to BGE about those uh, rotisseries. Hey, eh? they're pretty, 
pretty skookum things. I don't know. They look pretty easy to put in there, but, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I, we've got some thoughts rolling around, but uh, that's, that's, that's why you're hired, man. That's why. That's why I'm hired, you know. That's it. Yeah, I, I, it's it's a thing, right? Like I, big green egg. We gotta. We like to spin stuff too, but it's it's not there yet. The technology's not quite there yet. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah, well, that's guy, far. exactly. That's yeah. The one, the wife was watching me. She's like, "What are you doing to that thing? Don't worry, hon. We're spinning in ten minutes." That's it. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. So again, you know, it's it's more than just a smoker. You can grill on it. So you can grill your burgers and stuff like that. Um, talk to me a little bit about the tribal fire. Yeah. So uh, uh, that that's that's been a neat connection. Uh, they contacted me, um, and then they reached out to. Uh, uh, Rob Dopp and Rob contacted me and said, have you heard from, heard about this travel fire grill? And I said, well, actually they just contacted me this week and, um, and I need to call them back. She said, well, definitely call them back. And so, uh, I called them there an hour south of me in Indiana. Um, and they invited me to come down to their place and, <clears throat> um, they wanted to show me this accessory, uh, that would uh, work with, with my drums. And they said, bring your drum with you. So I loaded up and went down there, and um, they showed me their their travel fire griddle top, and um, and man, fit perfect, fit like a glove, um, and I fell in love with it. I took it home that night and fired it up, and um, man, totally it, it it changes your the way you cook, um, right? So there's all sorts of other griddle tops out there and everything. Um, and, right. So for those who don't know what the uh, Tribal Fire Grill is, it's more of that circular plancha a la um, Artie Flame mm -hmm. or, you know, that flat carbon, is it carbon steel? Yeah. And you get, yeah, and, it, and you've got a, a center opening um, with either a flat grate or a raised grate. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of different accessories that they're coming out with. Uh, so there's two rods that bolt on either side of it. And mm -hmm. you can, you, you sw I call them a swing arm attachment on there. So uh, one of them will hold a half pan, uh, disposable pan on there. So like if you're doing smash burgers, you got your raw meat in there and you're, you're got your balls of meat, put them on there and, and cook them. And then you want, you want to change that out and put a clean one in for your, your uh, cook patties. You can do that and then kind of hover it over the, the center. So it keeps it warm. Um, uh, they've got another one that's got the grill grates, uh, on there. So if you're doing the SCA so, competition, uh, you can so see your... this, this plancha sits on top of the opening of the, um, of your smoker. Yeah. Is there a firebox that comes up? Because I'm just envisioning that the, you know, that the, the there's, you know, two, three feet in between the normal charcoal. Is there an so attached there... firebox? Yeah, it comes when you buy the travel fire grill from us or or from them. You it comes with a an extra charcoal basket. It's a, it's a conical shaped basket. It hangs on the lip of the drum, so you take you take your lid completely off. Uh, we've now uh, adjusted our hinge to accept uh, the travel fire grill, um, and then you set this you set the charcoal basket in, um, and then you put your charcoal in, get it lit, put your your uh, griddle top on top of the drum covers everything up except in the center there um and and the, and off you go and then you you know want to open up your vents down at the bottom but your fire is now raised up higher and is right under that griddle top yep. so um so yeah and there's there's guys in sca that are using them um and uh, um rum runners barbecue is using them uh as well um uh, with his cooks and um uh, man it's just a you know if you're if you're in the backyard and you got people over uh, and you want to you want to do something and you're cooking it you want to cook it right then man that's uh that's that's the way to do it it's you got bacon grease that's you know dripping down in there and then flames coming out of the top and uh every man just kind of does the old tim mallet grunt you know <laughs> well that, and I, I will vouch for this there is no better smash burger than a lightly bacon greased smash burger that's Everything on that burger has to be kissed in that bacon grease. It's fantastic. Yeah. You know, especially on a plancha where you get that even, you know, killer crust on the end of it. Yeah, that's the perfect way. And you know, and and, and you hit it on the head. If you're having a party in your backyard. It, it can be a social grill too, where 
you know, right. people are making their own kebab. Fajitas. And they can pull it on the plancha yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Very cool. Right. Yeah. So it's been a, it's been a cool, uh, a cool connection, cool partnership. I was just, I was texting with Aaron, uh, Norris today. Uh, he's the he's the owner of the company. Um, and we've got uh, we got some things coming up we're gonna be doing together. So um, they're good they're good people over there. Awesome. That's really neat. So yeah. do you have a certain type of high heat powder coating or paint that you use then do? Yeah. So uh, and that and and bring, that brings uh, the travel fire in here as well. Uh, so with with the smoker traditionally and if we're doing custom colors and stuff like that um it is a we use a regular uh powder um so it's it's baked on at 450 uh it's rated to 600 uh so if you're just smoking and you don't have the travel fire grill then you're you're fine um if if we're going to get the travel fire grill um then i would recommend let's let's go to a high temp powder uh so use black as like like right now black is our our uh is one of our standard colors and it is it's uh, a 1200 degree uh powder and uh, um just just to make sure that we're we're good there um on the finish but yeah wow so you're powder coating everything correct wow that's amazing correct that's, uh, that's fantastic. That's <laughs> not gonna well, lie to you. I, I do have tons of questions about paint, but you just ruined all of them because you're you're going well, one, one level up. That's uh, <laughs> get on my get on my Instagram and scroll way down to the beginning, and there's some videos of me rattle can painting some of my first ones. And man, I'm about to go dizzy and got high doing that. And I, I was like, "This is for the that's for the birds. I don't have time." And the, and the way this thing has has been growing, you know, I just I don't have time to be painting it myself, and oh. um, and it's you know my powder shop, powder coat shop is just down the street from my shop, and they're great, and uh, they're starting to manufacture some of my parts now uh, there locally. So um, yeah, it's been a powder coat's been a game changer for sure, and it's more durable. Oh, for sure, yeah, it's. Yeah, even in my industry, like that's the that's the gold standard is the powder coat. The thing that I'm I'm worried about something I need to be painted with high heat paint is like twenty three feet long. So it's uh, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it's outside of the realm of powder coat. All of a sudden, and I was like, oh great, <laughs> let's hear this one. Oh shit. So yeah, 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 it all it all depends on how big their oven is too. I mean, you'll have to have find a really specialized company that yeah. that has that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. they're there. You can get you yeah. get it done. Oh no! <laughs> People get trailers done, so yeah, it's gotta be a way. Yep. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. Right on. So you've been really growing and cultivating this small business and kind of really expanding it. I mean, I'm sure the last year hasn't been without its trials and tribulations with having the you know going through learning how to grow your business and now having to adapt that to a pandemic. Uh, on the flip side, I, I know this is one of the things with talking with our Big Green Egg Rep, um, or at least my local Big, Big Green Egg Rep for Wisconsin, he said a lot of people are staying at home more and they want to learn to grill more and learn to cook more. So, you know, I think some of the cookers, I don't want to say they're not affected, but they're, you know, there's still some influx of people that are like, okay, well, not going out to eat. I'm not spending more money there. I'm going to learn how to do this on my own. Are you finding any of that? Yeah. So um, I think I caught all what you said. Um, <clears throat> the the here's here's the reality. We're we're we are in the middle of a pandemic where uh, coronavirus is a real deal, um, and it it has polarized our nation in in a degree that I never would have expected a year ago. Um, and, you know, so now not only we have politics and, and, uh, other, other things that are polarizing the nation. Now we have, um, a, a sickness. So, uh, and whether I wear a mask or not, or, you know, whether I get a vaccine or not, everybody has their different thoughts on that. Um, and people are dying, unfortunately. Um, I had a friend of mine that, that passed away, uh, recently, um, he was 50 years old and healthy. Um, so it's real. Um, it's unfortunate and it's sad for some, uh, for others, it's not affected them as, as much. Um, it's been nothing more than a minor cold. Uh, as far as the outdoor cooking industry goes, being affected by it, um, 
from those that I've talked to as well as myself, um, people, what you just said about your big, big green egg uh, rep, um, people are, are, they're at home. They're, they get bored. They want to, they want to learn to cook uh, from home in different ways and experiment and cook with fire. Um, and, uh, and so I, I think a lot of the, the charcoal companies were having trouble with uh, keeping up with demand for a while. Uh, it's hard to find charcoal in some of the stores. Um, and, and that's what's grown. That's what's launched, launched my business to the next level. Um, and uh, which has brought its, you know, bumps in the road uh, as well and, and growing pains and things that I've had to, you know, challenges we had to face. Um, but that's that's really what took us from my basement uh, to um, a 10 by 15 shop to a 20 by 50, uh, 20, 10 by 40 shop, a 20 by 40 shop, and now a 40 by 40 shop. Um, and now we're we're fixing to move again in the last uh, six months. So, um, and this one's not by choice, but uh, zoning commission reasons. So, <laughs> well, it's it's great when you run into the problems of, you know, we're growing fast, you know, when it becomes an issue of, you know, how fast you're going to be able to keep up with that. That's a good type of problem to have. Yeah. Well, that's the one thing we've seen directly and, and I'm sure you're in the same canoe here too. Um, everything to do with cooking and live fire and barbecue. It's, it's really hot right now. It's, it's hot all the way up here. Canada is usually five to 10 years behind the States in whatever they're doing but this one thing has rolled right over the border everyone's just going going bananas over we, we have a lot of small restaurants that would have never served barbecue before that are now making like really poor barbecue just to get it on their menu for takeout and skip the dishes and whatever right and that's making everyone that's at home or working from home want to barbecue that much worse yeah. so it or, or that well, much better and, however you mean and, to and now, it like it. The, before before the pandemic even started food trucks ha, it were is a billion dollar business and that is that i think has propelled barbecue to a whole nother level um in itself and yeah. so you've got you've got food trucks all the way up here and i, I don't you know i'm guessing food trucks are a thing in canada as well and oh, yeah. Yeah. and um, you know, before people kind of looked down, like, I'm going to buy my food off of a box <laughs> truck in the street. <laughs> um, yeah. and, but now it's the thing to do. And um, uh, people are very successful with it. So barbecue has, was a phenomenon before COVID. And now it's, uh, I think, it's becoming an Uber phenomenon. That's um, it. So th this is a funny, quite funny uh, comment there, Matt Lund. So I, I, I'm, I'm friends with him. He's, uh, he's a local boy. So Matt, I was saying, like we were talking about before we came online here, how several people had asked me about installing those doors on their, whatever drum smokers, right? Have you thought about branching out to Canada at all? Because I, I know a few people that are, that are itching for investments. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So we can ship into Canada. Um, I, my my company that I ship with, we they do ship into Canada. Um, so um, so yeah, we you know we can get it. We can get over the border there. Because <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I I'm just going by what I see here now, right? With uh, all of the modifications that people want me to do, and it, it's 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 brutal for me because i work plus i got the the whole big green egg thing and doing all of this and i just i don't have a lot of time for you know odd jobs and stuff like that and it, it sucks i i like doing things for friends but especially when it's minus 20 outside like you're not going to see me in my underwear going to tack up your barrel right i'm <laughs> you know what i mean like it's uh it's a thing we do have we do have a dress code mel uh <laughs> Cotton gin smokers. We we do have a dress code. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's uh, it, you know what I mean. It's it's a uh, yeah. I, I think there's there's probably a huge market up here for you as well because uh, they they look like beautiful units. And like I said, quite a few of my friends seem to be sporting them, so so they they can't suck, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is yeah. awesome. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Because these you know well, most of these boys they're. Yeah, I get a lot 
I get a lot of questions. I had somebody email me today asking if I if I chip to the UK, and um, so we're we're uh, we're looking at at those possibilities of being able to ship overseas in, in the future. Uh, have been really focusing on mostly you know marketing here in the states, and and um, but you know yeah, Canada's we can get we can get one up to you. So. Yep. So, so basically what it comes down to is if you have a question, just shoot you an email, you know, just ask because you yeah. might be surprised by the answer. I'm, I'm an open book. Uh, yeah, Matt at cottondensemakers.com is my email address and um, be glad to help you out. And, um, you know, and, and that's the other thing is, is uh, you know, yeah, I'd love to sell somebody – a smoker, but there's guys out there that are, that are building, you know, doing DIY stuff. And, uh, so that's, that's something that, you know, uh, could be in the future. Some, some classes that we do, where, um, we do a drum building class and, uh, we market that a little differently and, um, you know, bring in a group of guys to, to, you know, basically build their own smoker. Um, yep. so that's going to be, that's going to look a little differently with, for people that are further out, but, well, that's, that's one thing I thought was neat. I, I seen a few different <laughs> kinds of companies doing uh, kits for your for your attachments and stuff like that and shipping the kits out. Yeah. And then yeah. you doing your own with, with like an online course. That's, that's a great option for shipping yeah. and stuff, right? That's, yeah. And, yeah. And, and that's, I would totally, you know, send somebody the parts if they want to build it themselves and, um, yeah. You know, pay we'll the probably, vig, right? Pay the vig, and then away go the parts. That's I get it, man. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's yep. yeah, yep. Probably probably should come up with a, a, a different, a little different logo plate, the one that sets apart our, you know, the yep. ones that we build, and then the ones that are DIY uh, branded. So uh, yeah, that'd be pretty easy to do. Oh, fantastic, man! That's yeah, that's, that's a cool idea. You know, there where people can develop their own kind of attachment and sense of accomplishment of putting together their own. You know, smoker because not everyone, you know, is a journeyman welder like Mel and can, you know, get that bond with building a huge, you know, beautiful smoker. You know, it's if it's a kit, someone can kind of get that sense of accomplishment of hey, you know, and then they they have somebody over and they're like, I built that. Yeah, kind of just like a, a cool uh, attachment or um, you know method behind that that you don't get with everything. I, you know what, and just on a side note, and not that this applies or not or whatever, but I cannot wait to see the weird repairs that are going to come out of this COVID thing for like people's houses and stuff like that. Because everyone's learning how to do everything on YouTube now, and some people aren't on the right channels, right? <laughs> so who knows the things that plumbers are going to see like in a couple years from now when... yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who did this? Why did you do this? What is that's not well, it was COVID. COVID times and I didn't want to call a plumber. I went on YouTube and did this, but it's gonna be crazy. It's oh for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so man, we're talking about growth right now over the years. You know, your company's growing itself, your product line is growing. Product line is growing, yeah. So we're uh, we've got a prototype of a 500 gallon smoker on the trailer right now that we're uh, in process. It's slow coming, um, but uh, it is coming along. We've got a fully insulated firebox. Um, it's got two doors on it, um, and um, I'll let you in on the secret. It's going to have a hanging system as well, nice. uh, so um, you'll be able to hang a crap ton of ribs in there. <laughs> Um, Inside so of the actual uh, 500 gallon. Yes, sir. Yep. Oh. Yep. So uh, excited about that um, and how that's going to come out. So um, be uh, be on the lookout for that. So uh, I don't have a set timeline when that's going to be available yet, but that's uh, that's definitely in the works. And, and uh, um, I'm pumped about having having another trailer model. So that just going to put us in a whole other uh, market, um, right? As well. So. Um, and, uh, we, we still have on the radar to do a 30 gallon smoker. So, uh, okay. so, uh, awesome. it's on the radar. Yeah. So the, the 500 gallon smoker, is that a reverse flow? It is a, a traditional flow. Uh, it's not reverse flow. Okay. So traditional Texas style offset. So traditional flow firebox on this side, 
Um, opposite side okay. is going to be your stack. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> trying to think any other. See, I've got I've got some guys that are following me right now in that progress, and they want uh, double tanks on their trailers. So uh, that's going to be, uh, which is that's something I want as well. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> But when do I have time to build something for myself that's uh, kind of the nature of the beast? But, yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, do double tanks is romantic, man. It's uh, when, you, when well, you have a trailer and it's sitting there, it's. Yeah, it's it's hot for sure. Um, and it's versatile as opposed to having a thousand gallon, um, which is just a massive pit. Um, and I, I ate today um, uh, at Little Miss Barbecue. In Phoenix, uh, it was a great spot that uh, some guys recommended, um, and they had you know went back in their smoker room and they had two thousand gallon pits in there. And you know if you're if you're into catering and you're not in a restaurant setting, you know you, you need two five hundred gallons. You don't need a thousand gallon um, yeah. because you know you may not be using you know cooking for that big of a crowd. Uh, yeah. So you don't want to you don't want to try to be doing a thousand gallon and keeping maintaining that the whole time yep <laughs> yeah no oh, there i i love it man i love that the, the whole the texas style of barbecue right up here you, you have you have to picture canada as a whole up here trying to get texas style barbecue up here everywhere you go that's what they say they have until you get in there and and sure so the the old hickory pits you know they do have their place. Everything has their place, sure. but they're they're running off of natural gas and they're using pellets. Yeah. yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there for sure. But you think I've ever rolled into a place and seen like a thousand gallon Moberg sitting there? Never. I've never, wow. even if I wanted to go and look at somebody's pit right now, nothing would relate to what I'm I'm trying to build. It'll be a Southern Pride or an Old Hickory or it's, you know something similar to that. That's it. So it, it's it's crazy. It's it sucks, but uh, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I ca I cannot like being stuck on this side of the border right now. I can't even cross. But that was that was my big thing for this year. Last year was supposed to be get to Texas as soon as I can and get in the back of every place I eat. Like that's everyone's got to do it, especially if you're into building pits or you're as big into barbecue as we are. Right, you have to see it. You have to, you have to be a part of it just to to understand what's on your plate. And that's, oh, I, I love I love that you guys are already working on a trailer system for that exact. That's awesome. That's that's so awesome. Thanks. Yeah, we're we're definitely definitely excited to see what's going to come with that. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a huge hit, man. <laughs> that's yeah. I seen uh, I seen so Tra Traeger actually has a trailer unit like that okay that that runs on pellets and i seen it there was one brought up here for a very special circumstance and i was here when it when it was here and it was i was like wow yeah like you're you know you're in the league <laughs> you know that's I, I think uh i think yoder has a trailer uh, pellet as well yeah yeah no it was it was really neat to see like whichever brand it is very cool sure. yeah sure Awesome. <laughs> so what what's the thought behind getting into the uh, um, trailer smokers? Just wanting to branch out a little bit, or is it more of a? Well, we start. We started wanted. with. We started with trailers, right? So we okay. are, um, in, in 2018. Um, uh, we had started with uh, rotisseries um, on trailers. So our very first. Uh, uh, trailer we did was uh had six uh, uh racks in there it was four foot wide diameter four foot four foot wide and four foot diameter uh, uh rolled tank and a six by 12 trailer had a uh, gas got some gas grill on there had a uh, uh, skillet burners it had deep fires um uh, dry box and a wood wood cage on there wow. and uh so it's it it a beast of a smoker um and uh, the the reason that we went the, the route of the 500 gallons is uh, I had 10 of them uh, wind up basically in my lap, 
and um, and so uh, that was unexpected, and um, so I was like, well, heck, you know, let's uh, let's build one. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's sometimes you just gotta gotta go with uh, go with the flow, and um, so that's what we did on that one, and uh, it's looking like it's gonna be a good flow to go with. Awesome. I can't wait to see that. You've you've totally piqued my interest now. That's awesome. Yeah, I think you're really tapping into a whole other group of people that you know. Yeah. You know, so you have the your, your cotton gin drum smokers for the people that want to get into smoking, and then you're going to have the trailer system for the people that want to take it to that next level and really get into smoking. You know, there's a difference between getting into yeah. smoking and getting into smoking. So yeah. I think that's cool that you 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 in the field of both. You mentioned Sonny Moberg a minute ago, and, and he's he's been an inspiration. I, you know, I've not had any direct contact with him. We've, I've uh, wanted to reach out to him. So, Sonny, if you see this, uh, be expecting the call soon. But uh, I watched a uh, uh, deal with him in uh, 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 Texacana uh, Barbecue. And, um, you know, one thing he said on there is that there's room in the in the market for uh, for guys to, to be building pits. And, um uh, and I know the waiting list for Mobart is quite lengthy, and, and for some of these other guys, is quite lengthy. And um, uh, so it tells me that there's there's room in the market. And there's a piece of the pie there that's, uh, that's available. Um, and uh, and Insani's guy I respect. Actually, I actually made fun of him uh, about probably about a year ago on Instagram, and uh, he took a picture of him standing up on top of a tank and had his dog up there with him and uh, had his arm crossed. And so <laughs> I, I looked at my wife and said, follow me outside for a second. I grabbed one of my drums and I put it out in the grass and I, I climbed up on the drum and stood on top of that. And I put my cat down at my feet and, uh, and I, I took a picture and then tagged him on it. And he, he got a chuckle out of that, but uh, great, great guy. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's one of the great things about barbecue. It's more of, you know, there, there is a sense of community even among, you know, what people might see as competitors, but there's that, sense of community and brotherhood behind just barbecue and then you know the creators or the makers that are you know putting forth that pit too i mean there's something um to be said about that as well absolutely Uh, so another thing i wanted to touch on with you too is you know the role that you think social media has with not only you and your company, your growth, uh, which obviously is leading to a group of ambassadors and kind of ties all of that together. I and mean, you think that is playing a role in um, part of your growth that you're experiencing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, we've got um, a great team of ambassadors right now. And, um, and, uh, it, it is, is blowing my mind. They're, they're, they're incredible. Uh, they're dedicated. They're uh, committed, and uh, they're people that I can rely on, rely on for advice and, and uh, uh, input. Uh, and they've become friends. And um, so, one of the things that we're doing, because uh, I get I get re- uh, people reaching out all the time, wanting to be on the team, and um, and and here's what I would say: if if you're watching and you want to be on on my team, uh, right now we're not accepting new ambassadors we just accepted two more uh, uh we are uh but what we look for is um um people who are engaged with our brand uh, people who are are uh, engaged with the content on instagram and facebook uh, and, and not just somebody who's followed me today and then two seconds later asking uh for a free smoker and um and so I, I want to build that relationship before I just, you know, make some bring somebody on my team. And actually, the, the two that we just brought on, um, uh, Ty and Shelby, um, they're actually customers. Ty bought a smoker for me, uh, oh gosh, a year ago now, uh, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, we built a relationship. He came and picked it up at my house. Um, he had the privilege of having one that was built in my basement, and. Uh, um, you know, being the Green Bay Packer fan that he is, uh, he showed up and I had his smoker sitting on a piece of glorious uh, AstroTurf from Texas Stadium uh, with the Dallas Cowboy blanket on top. And uh, uh, so when he walked in the door, I was waiting on him. But uh, but he's just been, he stayed stayed in touch with me since then. And he's become a friend. And 
uh, I got to spend some time with him out in Kansas City recently and uh, went on a trip with him out there. And, uh, and uh, so, yeah, just the, the relationships have gotten deep there. And uh, uh, it's played a huge impact. So most of my marketing has been via Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, and you got some um, some really great cooks on your uh, um, squad there too. I mean, like you mentioned, Shelby, who's um, at High Voltage Barbecue, um, yeah. Rich, um, um, Bayhurst. Yes, I can't remember his name. Yeah, that's right. So we got uh, Rich Bayhurst, uh, who's texting me right now, popping up while we're talking. Uh, so Polish Q um, is Rich Bayhurst. High voltage barbecue is Shelby Prest. Um, uh, Freedom so hard is Derek Perry. Uh, um, uh, Chef Craig Tabor. Um, uh, and if you're in the Atlanta area, he's he's uh, in Swanee, Georgia. Got a store there uh, called Playing with Fire. Uh, get out. Um, uh, Sap underscore BBQ is Cole Sappington. Uh, Cole uh, is so one of these times. Uh, Chris, me, you, and Ty, and Cole are gonna have to get together and, and meet up at Cole's house. So that's kind of in the middle for us, and yeah, uh, do some cooking there. Um, uh, smoking Ty, uh, and then uh, Rum Runners Barbecue. Uh, uh, that's Rob and Amy Dopp. <clears throat> and they're on the competition side, so they've they've uh, brought something to the table uh, that's been valuable and uh, connected me to the competition world. Uh, so they've introduced me to you know. Uh, uh, people like Brad Orson and the Shed and, and that crowd and um, and the SCA competition all together, Brett uh, Galloway and um, all those guys. So we're about to start sponsoring SCA. Uh, we'll be at Worlds this year. Um, and it uh, looks like the world champion at SCA is going to be getting a cotton gin smoker. Um, and uh, so that's a pretty cool honor there. Um, that's we'll awesome. The we'll be at the Shed in April um, down, down in Mississippi. Oh. Uh, and, then, and then my first – my first uh, uh, team member is Colin Barker, uh, Barker BBQ, uh, and um, so he was he was one I brought on at the very beginning, and then and then it's grown from there. Um, so we want to keep it small and tight right now. Uh, I don't want to explode and, and have uh, too many where it gets out of control. Um, yeah. You know, we'll we'll add a couple here and there, but um, uh, that's kind of the model I want to go after right now. <clears throat> You know, and that's an issue you can run into. You know, there's some companies that'll spread themselves too thin too quickly, and then a lot of then a lot can get lost in the shuffle. Um, people might not stand out. It might not be like, oh well, anybody can be on their team. You know, so it's nice to you know start slow and kind of grow with that from what you're uh, doing too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we we've seen a lot of ton with rubs, especially. <laughs> mm -hmm. The market just totally washes right out, and then you're like, "Well, why, why would I pay for it if I can get it for free?" Right? Like yeah, that's, rub yeah. sauces. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's those are things that you can kind of you know run yourself out of. Yeah, no, it's it's good. It's good to be loyal to the people that are putting out the content, mm -hmm. and that that are that are true to the brand. That that's good yeah, that yeah. you're doing the backstory with everybody. That that actually. That says a lot about your brand right there. So that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's like like with us and, and uh, Team Green being on Big Green Eggs Team Green. Um, people tell me all the time they're like, "Yeah, I just got a I just got a Big Green Egg and you know, I'm I'm messaging so and so and and I'm looking forward to getting on the team." And I think to myself like I I did like 3 or 4 years of hard work. Right. <laughs> with with not even like a reshare or anything, <laughs> you know, like yeah, it's you know, it, it's it's good to hold out. It's good to hold out for sure. Make sure, make sure you're vetting everybody. That's awesome. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's part of. I had this conversation, I think, with Ty earlier too. Is you know, that's the other side of this quarantine thing. Is you get all these people now that expect to be influencers. Uh, you know, this is not at all re re related to cotton gin anymore, but it's just a conversation that I've had with him. And they're like, yeah, you know, oh, I think I'll do this. And that's one of the things that drives me nuts. You know, you can tell these people are just trying to do that. Um, you know, it's the people who every single day are saying, hey, I cooked this once. Here's the recipe for it. You know, and that's one of the things that's like, no, <laughs> you don't do that. You, you, 
it means more if you put the time into it. No, I cooked this recipe four times. I finally got it right. Here's what it is. Now, hey, it's my first time trying it. Here's the recipe. Follow me. No. Uh, yeah. you know, I if, think you're, there's... if you're if you're listening to this and you want to become an ambassador for somebody for a company for a brand, um, you know, make sure it's the brand that you respect. Mm-hmm. Make sure it's a brand that's that's got some credibility, um, and and do your due diligence. Um, engage with them as a company, uh, track their content, uh, like, comment, do do the social media diligence, um, buy their product, buy their product. Yeah. Um, that that speaks volumes to the company, um, and um, and we're you know companies start up because you know they're here to make money right you know that i'm i'm passionate about this but you know i want to make i want to make money i want to provide for my family um and so if i give everything away then you know that kind of defeats that purpose there Um, well you don't want a business on free yeah well (laughs) that's that's exactly right what you're saying about spending not only the money but like appreciating the brand well before you get signed on to anything Right. This 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 was for for me with Big Green Egg, I already owned a couple of units. Right. I had I had been cooking on them for quite a while, and I was literally tagging them just hoping for a reshare. It had it had nothing to do with I just wanted other egg people to know that I am a, an egg person. That was all it was. Yeah. And then one day I got that email and I actually didn't even respond to it. I thought it was bullshit. And six months later, someone else on the team was like, yeah, dude, that's the guy. You should <laughs> probably message him back. And then, and then I, you know what I mean? Like, that's how it went for me. It was, mm-hmm, sure. so I always chuckle when people are like, yeah, I'm posting every day and I'm gonna, and I was like, well, I, I did that every day, not even thinking about it. So right. if that's your your goal already they'll probably see you coming <laughs> quite a few miles away you know what i mean right. like i think i think you have too many people out there now that are trying to be influencers instead of hey i'm a cook this is what i do because it's what i have fun and then everything else just kind of falls in place you know there's people out there who are like okay i'm going to work with whatever company i'm going to send out 12 emails and whatever company says yes to me that's the best girl there is now I'm going to, you know, and and it's part of it that's just really kind of, you know, starting to really kind of drive, drive me nuts now. It's just that, you know, you see these people that they're trying so hard to do that, that they're not focusing on what they should be doing because people can see the fakeness. People can see if you're trying, you know, uh, here's here's the other thing. Don't buy followers. Don't waste your money. Don't buy followers. Uh, I don't know if either one of y'all have ever bought followers, but uh, that as you know, as a as a as a company, as a brand, you know, um, the way I look at it from this side is is almost uh, uh, somebody that contacts me and they've got a million followers. Uh, well, they've bought the followers because they're trying to impress me, um, and most of the followers are going to be fake and and you know fabricated numbers and and. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I, that would that'd be my advice. But I'm not. I an can't expert tell either, you so. <laughs> the amount of people that I've blocked because they buy followers. It's just yeah. it, it, it drives me nuts. I mean, you can look and see these people that you know you'll see them shoot up three thousand in a month. Um, you know, and there's websites out there where you can track it. And you know, there's one guy I saw that gained thirty five hundred followers in a month. He had 10 posts and only like 3,100 likes on those 10 posts. Like, right. yeah, you can just kind of see it. You know, you got 25,000 followers, but you get 200 likes per post and 10 comments, and half of them are you. You know, you <laughs> can tell the people that are fake, and it's. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Sorry, I, my audio changed. My, my Air, AirPods died, so. That's it. Yeah. yeah it's still so great. We're good. Yeah, the, the internet's, the internet's a, a weird game, man. Everybody's. I, I'm watching it evolve every day. Things are changing every day with how sales pitches work and everything works and whatever. I, I feel like at the end of the day, brass tax to it, it's still it's still going to be exactly what it is, right? I, I can't sell you a good brisket if I cook a shit brisket. 
you're going to see a shit brisket. So that's, you know, that goes with everybody, with brands, with rubs, with whatever. It's, I don't know, stand, stand true to what you do. Every time I put up a cook, whether it be good or bad or whatever, I'm there behind it. And if you think it's raw, comment raw, and I'll, I'll not, or will, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, you can't please everybody either, but. No, that's right. You, you have to stand behind your shit, and you're obviously standing behind yours, which is amazing, and that's that's that says the whole thing behind the brand right there, and that makes me want to buy one just on that alone. So, uh, the, the three pillars that I tell people for for my brand is uh, uh, honesty, integrity, and quality, and it's not perfection um, because we're human, right? Um, we're flawed, and um, and people do make mistakes and. Um, and so being a man-made product, there could be mistakes, um, but it's what we do with those mistakes and how we, how we move forward and how we improve and how we grow. Um, and so, uh, that's, that's my belief as a, as a person. Um, and, and, um, and then whenever I started the company, that's what I wanted to be the background for my company. Uh, so I, I hope to sit down and have a beer with you one day, man. That's awesome. You, you, you definitely seem like a person I'd get along great with. So, right on, man. I, I'm glad to hear that you're modeling your entire company behind that. That's, Thank yeah, you. fantastic. It's, it's refreshing. You know, there's a lot of companies out there that, you know, their pillars might be making money, you know, pushing product, and, you know, not, not necessarily focusing on the what's behind the product and, you know, what, what bringing your beliefs not only – from you, but behind your product and bringing that forward too. And, 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 and that shows a lot for people who are looking to make an investment too, you know, because I, I always tell people like grills, smokers, it's, it's an investment. You know, you're not just buying a product, you're, you're investing in sure. yourself, you're investing in the smoker, you're investing in your family as far as feeding them and what you can do and bring to the table. So, you know, from your standpoint, you're having people not only invest in your grill, but, you know, kind of invest in you yourself. And it's nice when you put that behind that to go along with it. Yeah. Well, if you don't, cool. and those three pillars, if you don't have one, then the other ones are going to get messed up in the process. Mm -hmm. you yeah. don't have to your integrity is not there, obviously. Um, and quality is going to wind up waning at some point. If you don't have integrity. Then, you know, you're going to be willing to cut corners and, uh, you know, do things like that so yeah. no that's that's awesome man that's that's awesome yeah so yeah i don't know mel do you have any other uh questions for matt anything you that's pressing on your mind that you want to learn about i i i don't know i i'm trying to think of the next time i'm going to see one of your rigs now i uh i i'm i'm hoping to dip down to the state soon but but maybe uh Maybe one of the one of the Canadian retailers retailers that dip onto here might work something out with you, and then I'll get to see one sooner. Yeah, um, so that's a you know um, uh, we've got a few dealers. Um, I don't have any dealers in Canada right now, um, and and we're um, and, and if you're one of my dealers and you're listening, this this is great. Um, uh, but uh, you know we're we're reevaluating how that's going to work because uh, you know the customization has has become so popular uh, since yep. that started off doing. That's what a lot of people want is the custom models. So uh, we're we're it's going to be a process to make make happen. But we're trying to make things more beneficial for the dealer um, and also for uh, for us and being able to move the custom and push the custom stuff. And um, so yeah, that's. There's a lot of a lot of a lot of irons in the fire and a lot of a lot of things on the plate right now, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know that it's always a good problem to have though. <laughs> that's it. It's it's good to be busy, that's for sure. Yeah. So right on. Perfect. Anything else you want to mention, Matt, or anything else you want to throw out there? Uh gosh. Um man, I I, I, I I just want to say thanks to, to y'all. Um, I, I appreciate, um, this opportunity to, to be on here and it's, uh, it's an honor. Um, and, um, yeah. Um, if you're watching, um, go check us out on Instagram at cotton Um, TikTok's a work in progress. Uh, 
uh, uh, cotton dot gin dot uh, smokers uh, on there, and the Facebook is cotton gin smokers. So track us there. You will see standard models on the website, um, and then contact me directly for customization. Uh, Matt at cotton gin smokers dot com. Awesome. Man. Hey, thanks right for coming on. on. It's great uh, chatting, and it's and it's great to hear kind of the the behind the scenes of you know kind of where you started from, um, where you are now, and I guess where you're going to be going with the uh, trailer smokers. It's uh, really cool, and it's and like and like we said, it's refreshing to hear um, a company that's built on your kind of three pillars and bringing that forward too. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. Thank you very much for coming on. We greatly appreciate it. Anytime, man. Door's always open. Thank you. So Beautiful, guys. So, guys, that's uh, after the cook uh, for this Tuesday. Mel, what do we got lined up for next week? We have Dave Williamson uh, of Dave's Comedy. You would have seen him on Burt Kreischer's last tour. I think last two tours. He is the gentleman that does all of the barbecuing. For Bert Kreischer on tour, it is going to be an amazing show. He is quite a quite a clever cat and very very funny. I'm super pumped to have him on, and he's going to have some horror stories that I I am very excited to hear. So yeah, he's uh he's quite quite the quite the funny guy, and he also knows a ton about barbecue. So there you go. Yeah, we may have to talk to him a little bit off air too, because I'm sure there's some things that we're not going to be able to talk about on air. So. <laughs> that's it. Or stay late. Stay late for that one, because that's going to be uh, it'll it'll go somewhere there. But uh, yeah, anytime you see one of anytime you see one of Burt Kreischer's posts about him being on tour, there's uh, there's a grill somewhere hanging right off of his tour bus, and Dave's right there cooking beef ribs and briskets and stuff it's it's awesome i can't yeah, wait he, he appears to be well fed so yeah he's he's doing all right so yeah super pumped man thank you very much for being on everybody thank you for following along this has been another episode of after the cook see you next tuesday be well guys <laughs>